Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. I was recently sent this outdoor wireless Ethernet bridge kit, and it's actually really cool. It's called a CPE 450, and there's a link in the description below the video. And it's from a company called UV. Amongst other things, it allows you to connect two locations up to three kilometers apart as if you had an Ethernet cable running between them. Let's check it out. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, suppose you have a home network like this, but you want to have internet access in some fairly remote location like this. This could be a garage or a barn or some other kind of outbuilding. All you need is a source of electricity and you can easily set up this thing called a CPE bridge as a wireless ethernet connection. In the simplest case, they act as a pair with a master and slave, but you can also set them up as two individual access points or even simple repeaters. The maximum range is said to be three kilometers with no obstacles in the way, but I haven't tested that range. I suspect in the real world of trees and buildings and stuff, your range will be quite a bit less than that, but it's still remarkable. The maximum speed is 100 megabits per second. But before we get into setting it up, let me show you one other application for Starlink satellite internet users. A normal Starlink setup looks like this, with all your equipment attached or in your house. But sometimes you can't locate the dish on your house due to trees or buildings blocking the sky. And the built-in cable is only about 100 feet long, so you can't get, really get that dish too far from your house. Well, with this Ethernet bridge, you could locate your Starlink dish at a location that does have a clear sky view and use the bridge to transmit the internet signal back to your house. Now, of course, it will be limited to 100 megabits per second by the bridge, but really that may not be a big issue for you. Kind of an interesting case, isn't it? Okay, so here's what comes in the box. Two of the CPE 450 units, which are identical by the way, two PoE or power over ethernet injectors, and two pipe clamps for affixing your devices to poles. The units also have mounting tabs on the back for regular wall mounting, by the way. Oh, and also in the box are instructions. But I'll warn you right now, <laughs> these instructions are nearly impossible to follow. But if you follow this video and have a little bit of networking knowledge, you will be absolutely fine. In addition to what's in the kit, you will also need CAT5 or CAT6 Ethernet cables, four of them for, of appropriate lengths for the, even the basic configuration, and mounting hardware, of course, depending upon how you're going to position the two units. A quick word about PoE. PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet, and it allows you to power a small device using a regular Ethernet CAT5 or CAT6 cable, carrying both your power and the network signal. The thing you plug into AC power is called a PoE injector. And in this case, it has two RJ45 jacks ganged together, but only one of them is labeled PoE and that's the one that carries the power. Let's have a look at the CPE device itself. On the left is a small black button that is used to change the radio channel. There are 16 channels from zero to nine, then A through F, and the current channel number is displayed here on this little di digital display. Underneath the display is a tiny switch which determines whether the unit is A or B in your configuration. If the decimal point on the digital display is off, the unit is in A mode. If it is lit, then the unit is in B mode. There's a DC power jack over here, but you don't need to use that since we have PoE. When your installation is complete, there is a sort of a cap that fits snugly over the bottom for protection. There are two ways to set up the device, a simple manual way for the bridge configuration or a much more complicated method requiring a laptop for more sophisticated setups. 
For the simple bridge configuration like this, you start at your home network end. You set the switch on the first CPE unit to the A position. Then plug the PoE injector into a standard AC outlet and connect an appropriately long Ethernet cable from the injector's PoE socket to the CPE device. The display will cycle through a few states, then after about 30 seconds or so, we'll start flashing an H. H stands for manual configuration mode, obviously. <laughs> the next step is to select your channel number. Use that tiny push button to cycle through the channels. I'll use channel three for this demonstration. The channel number will flash until you are connected to the other device. Pay attention, there will be a quiz at the end. Normally, of course, the second unit will be in another building, but for demo purposes, I've got it right here beside the other one. Okay, so on this unit, set the switch to the B position. Plug the second PoE injector into an AC receptacle, and once again, connect them up with another Ethernet cable. Again, after a few seconds to boot, an H will flash. By the way, this sometimes takes a while, so just be patient. Once the H appears, press the little button to set the channel the same as unit A, in my case, channel three. And again, the three will start flashing. In a real setup, of course, you would want to have the two units facing each other because they're fairly directional. So in about 30 seconds or so, the numbers on both ends will go solid. And you will see the signal strength on the side of the units light up. Once you've got that connection, you may want to take that moment to physically mount the two units and pos position them for maximum signal strength. For the network connection, connect unit A to your home network router with yet another ethernet cable. You can plug into either the second jack on the unit itself or into the LAN side of the PoE injector, whichever is more convenient. They, they both work the same. Then on the remote side, connect unit B to your laptop or security camera or whatever equipment you have there. Again, you can use either the jack on the CPE unit or the one on the PoE injector. Your device at the remote location will connect to your home network across the bridge in exactly the same way as if you had a wired connection. It's really that easy to set up. Now, if you want to configure the product in a more sophisticated way, such as connecting multiple units or using them as access points or repeaters, you will need to use the more complicated method. If you're not comfortable with mucking around with IP addresses and network settings, you may want to stay clear of this, but I'll show you enough to get you started. Step one, use the table in the instruction manual to figure out the IP address of unit A. This will be 192.168.255.100 plus whatever your channel number is. So for me, 192.168.255.103. For unit B, the last numbers start at 200 instead of 100. Step two, connect a laptop to unit A using an ethernet cable and configure it to be essentially a management device as follows. Set your computer's IP address manually to be on the same subnet as unit A, but with a different address, such as 192.168.255.99. There's a couple of ways to manually set your IP address, but here's the one I use. Right click on your network icon, select Open Network and Internet Settings, then click Ethernet, then Change Adapter Options, then Ethernet again, and Change Settings of this connection. 
On the Ethernet Properties screen, then select the IPv4 line. It says Internet Protocol version 4 and hit Properties. Normally, your setting will be Obtain an IP address automatically. Instead of that, select Use the following IP address and type in your choice 192, 168, 255, 99. And make sure the subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, Hit OK and close. Hey, that wasn't so hard, was it? By the way, when you're done all this, be sure to go back and select the automatic IP address setting when you're done. Now that your laptop IP address is set up, go to your browser and on a new tab, type in the IP address of the CPE unit, 192.168.255.103. As if by magic, the CPE login screen appears. The default account and password are admin admin. The user interface allows you to set your password, set your country, override the AB switch, and all sorts of things. And from here, you can set uh, your devices in bridge mode or set them up as access points or repeaters. If you have more than one kit, you can even set up multiple bridge units from here. The settings screen allows you to optimize your transmission power and all sorts of other fancy stuff. Take your time and be patient as some of these settings take a few seconds to provision on the device. One other tip, it helps to download a free Wi-Fi analyzer onto your phone. This will allow you to confirm that the devices are activated and on the right channels. I'll leave you to it at this point. I hope this video has been helpful in explaining how to set up and configure your UV outdoor CPE kit. Thanks for watching. <music>